Please join me in prayer. Gracious and loving God, help us this day to understand and celebrate your dream for the world, to be transformed in Jesus' love, and to use our gifts to make a difference for others. Amen. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us, that we should be called children of God. Behold what manner of love. Last week, I invited us to consider this season after Easter, which is a season grounded in new life and the life of God welling up in us. I invited us to consider in this season what Bishop Michael Curry calls the way of love. And that love is the actual currency of life. It's what allows life to emerge among us. So let's take that journey together and think a little bit about love. And what does it really mean to use this currency of love, to live in love for God and with one another? Now there's a danger in taking apart the different pieces of love because this kind of love itself is actually more like a dance with no beginning and no end. And so, so to pull out one piece would suggest that you can pull it apart like a puzzle. But it does help to be aware of the different movements of how the way of love works in our life and in our community and in the world. So let's begin. What are the movements of the way of love? This week I'd like to focus on the first movement, not because it's first, it's we're choosing to do it first, which is receiving love. Receiving the love of God. We're always reminded, especially by John, that this is the good news, not that we have loved God, but that God loved us first. And ironically, sometimes it can be most difficult for us to receive love when we think about the great dance of love. So let me invite you first to begin to think about and reflect on those places where you receive love. God's love, the love of others. You might consider receiving God's love out in creation, where you're aware of the awesomeness of God's power and you find yourself a part of all the creation. And there's that moment of well-being when you understand God's gracious love for the whole world and for you as a part of it. Maybe you experience God's love in play. We often think about the play of watching children play, but adults play too, don't we? Not the kind of competitive playing, but that kind of playing where you're totally wrapped up in something so enjoyable and so beautiful that you almost, you almost lose yourself. It seems paradoxical, doesn't it? You almost lose yourself, but in that moment, you really know God's love for you in a special way. Maybe you know God's love in the presence of others at the end of a wonderful meal together with a group of friends and where you're sharing stories. And there's that deep kind of listening that reminds you that God loves everyone around the table and you. It may just be simple acts of kindness and love that come into your life every day. But as you begin, can you remember the places that you receive love and name those places? And can you name the places where it can be hard for you to receive love as well? All of these moments that I just mentioned are really signs. They're signs not just that we're loved, which is important, but they're signs of who God really is. They're signs of God's love. And so all these little moments of love actually point to 
a deeper reality, which is eternal, which is God's love. They point us towards what is essentially real about God in this world, and that is that God loves us. And what does that mean? Well, when we talk about the God that Jesus reveals, God's love is revealed as the love between a, a parent and a child. Jesus knows that he is deeply loved and deeply in communion with the person that he keeps calling the Father. That's just all he calls him all the way through the, the gospel, the Father, because it's that kind of love that Jesus knows that God gives. And so when we think about these signs of love, we think about how God really is in relationship with human beings. Think about that parent-child relationship at its best for a moment. I was considering this a little bit earlier, thinking about my own life, and I thought, well, what is it that made my parents' love so strong, so unique? One is they always had my best interests at heart. They were always thinking about what's best for me. And though it's trite, and it can seem trite sometimes, I think it really comes from the heart of so many parents when, when a child asks, what do you want of me? And they say, I only want what will really make you happy. I want for you. And that's God's love for us. So often it's easy to picture God as a God of control or a God who's trying to uh, uh, direct our lives in a certain way and keep us from having fun. But really the love of God, the character of the love of God is that it wants the best for us. And then I thought of another moment. A moment when I sort of broke my parents' heart I was having a tough time in, in school, and so I ran away from home. And I know my parents were worried sick. And I still remember uh, when I finally came back home, driving up the little cul-de-sac we lived in, and there was my father in the driveway, waiting with open arms, just like the prodigal son. And so that kind of quality that Jesus talks about of receiving love is to be able to receive the kind of love is that even when, we, even when we run away or even when we mess up, that God is waiting to receive us because God loves us even if we've run away. Or I just think of the normal moments, how at times in my life when I was feeling stressed or, or like I needed, to, uh, I needed to get away from my normal life, even as an adult, I could come home. It's that funny line, right? Uh, home is where they always have to take you back or take you in. And that's the quality of God's love, to be able to receive that kind of, of love that always makes a place for you and for me. That's the kind of love that God gives to us. So if we live in a world like that, or if we live in a relationship like that, maybe better, what makes it so difficult to receive that love? Why is it so hard to understand that that is the very nature of what it means to be in relationship with God, is to receive that love? In the letter that John wrote today, he talks about people who, who don't know those who have this kind of relationship with God because they don't, they don't know what it is to be able to receive love in that way. And so they don't understand these Christians. They don't understand these Christians who live not in fear, but in love. So this week, let me invite you to make that your practice in the way of love. The first practice of receiving love. As you go throughout your week, notice those signs, notice those times when you're deeply aware of love coming into your life. And you can simply say thank you. 
But also notice those times when you're feeling out of sorts. And you're feeling a little lost. And you're a little bound up inside. Think to yourself in that moment, or remember in that moment, the very nature of things is that God is loving me right now. And see if that makes a difference in your life. In this week of Easter, we are finding life through the way of love. And this week, behold, receive, take in the love that God has given to us. For you are God's child.